Hello all. Welcome to part 18 of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification video series. In this video, we will look at how to add additional functions in Railgun to extend its functionality. This video is part of the SMFE course come certification. Please have a look at securitytube.net slash SMFE for more details. Our certifications are currently being taken from students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video is made available free of charge to the community as part of Security Tube's vision to provide free yet quality infosec education to one and all. Okay. So in the last video, we saw how Railgun could actually be used to call arbitrary functions in DLLs on the victim system. So is it too good to be true, right? So let's actually go ahead and try a function called net user change password, which changes the password of a given user. Okay. So here goes, this is a net API 32. So we'll go here to the attacker machine. We already have a metal predator session running. Let's go into IRB mode and then let's access railgun using client.railgun and then net API 32 is the name of the DLL and then net user change password. Now if you are trying to change the password of the user in the local machine the first option is null, which is put in as nil. The second option is the name of the account. So we had created an account Metasploit Metasploit, if you remember in a previous video, the old password, which is also Metasploit, and then the new password, which is Metasploit123, just as an example, right? Now let me go ahead and run this command. Now, if you notice, immediately we got a huge trace back and what this basically says is runtime error dll function not found known functions net user del and net get join information interesting right so if we actually go to the appropriate directory and if you don't know the directory you could simply do a locate railgun and then you would find the appropriate directory from the list of options you have Let's go into this directory under railgun, you have def and this is where all the DLLs and the functions inside them are defined. And let's open up def net API 32, uh, which is what would be required if you wanted to do the net user change password. Now what you notice is there just seem to be two functions which are added in this file, net user del and net get join information so what this actually means is that not all functions in the dll are defined in railgun right and this is where i think as more and more security researchers contribute to railgun and find use for different apis they keep adding those apis to the definition files so what we would need to do is add the function definition for the DLL before we can use it. Now, there are two ways in which we can do this. So let's look at net user change password. And here is what we can do. Right, let me go back here. Right, let me just go back to IRB mode. Now, when you talk about adding definitions, you can do it in two ways. The first one is to add function definitions on the fly, which is you're already inside a metapreter session, right? Probably, you know, you may not get another chance to compromise the victim. Uh, and you immediately want that specific function to be supported by railgun. So this is where at runtime you can add the function by using client railgun add function, sorry, and then uh, basically 
add function along with the first thing is the name of the DLL net API 32 the second thing is the function you want to add the third is the output data type of the function and then after that basically what you have is the different arguments the function takes uh, they are data types probably a descriptive argument name and then finally if it is in or out in direction so let me show you how to do this so client railgun add function is what we need to use we are already in IRB mode so we have client railgun add function and the first input if you remember was the DLL which is net API 32 the second input is going to be the name of the function you want to add which is net user change password the third is the output data type and the fourth is actually going to be all the inputs the function takes or the arguments so this is where what we are going to do is we're going to mention all the four arguments if you remember from the previous slide so this is the place for all the four arguments and then the first thing you do is mention the data type so in this case you're going to use pwcar and then probably a descriptive name for that argument so we have domain name username old pass and new pass so let's go ahead and use it so the first thing is data type uh, and then you have domain name the direction of the argument is in right now let's move on to the next argument which is basically the if I remember the username for which you change the password again this remains the same username goes as in and then you're going to have right the old password and then finally the new password right so we have old pass and then we're going to have the new pass right so everything looks perfect right now oops so what this actually does is dynamically goes ahead and add support for this specific function right i think i have one small typo here So let's go ahead and add this. Now if you notice, this basically says that yes, this addition has been made. Now let's go ahead and access this function. So we'll say client railgun and then the DLL name which is net API 32 and then you have net user change password so the first thing was the server name which is the local host the username which is metasploit the old password which was the default password used by metasploit which is still metasploit and then the new password let's say metasploit123 right let's go ahead and run this and if you notice right now it allowed you to run this and the return value 0 suggests that everything ran fine. We can verify that as well. Let's go back to the Windows machine. Let me 
log off and let me try logging in as metasploit metasploit which was the original default password so here it goes metasploit metasploit if you notice did it not work i'm going to use metasploit one two three and there you go right now as probably you're thinking it could be a pain to keep adding these functions dynamically because a lot of these functions would be something you may want to use uh, every time you compromise a host, right? And this is where what you need to do is statically define it in the right config file, the definition file. So in this case, I have already opened up the definition file for NetAPI32. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the function, which we just talked about right now, which is net user change password, right? And here goes, so we have server name, username, all of that is perfect. And the next thing we want to do is add the old password, the direction is in and then I want to add the new password. Right. Again, the direction is in. There you go. Right. Now, let's go ahead, quit Metasploit entirely and reload the framework. So basically what I have done is kind of skip forward one slide and I have located the appropriate definition file for the DLL and inside it I have added a new function net user change password. Right? Now you may be kind of asking, hey, what about new DLLs? That is something we'll take up in the next video. So let's just wait for the Metasploit framework to load. Our victim machine is already up and running. Right? So while it is loading, right, this is the power of Railgun. Basically, now you have access to all DLLs, all functions which those DLLs export, and at runtime, you can call any of those functions. This gives you a huge amount of power and flexibility to do what you want on the remote system. And the best part, you can extend the functionality of Railgun at runtime rather than requiring to restart the framework again. Of course, for functions which you plan to use uh, on a regular basis, you should probably go ahead and add them, even to check the code in inside the Metasploit official SVN, if they allow it, that is. Right? So net user change password, where can it come in handy? You created a new user, using uh, you know the add user payload and then probably decided hey you should probably have changed the password to something more difficult to guess by a fellow hacker and that's when this can come in handy right so let me break into the system Set the remote host, right, exploit the remote system, change context to the Metasploit user, yeah. unusual, so this is where I think Probably it's taking some amount of time to you know, run the DLL properly or something, <laughs> right? No tool is out there which might not have bugs, but always face issues which you would never expect, right? Let's migrate to explorer.exe, favorite option. This is so that we run in the context of the user for whom you want to change the password. 
let's drop inside IRB and let's invoke railgun net API 32 net user change password this is for the same computer hence null the username for which you want to make the change is metasploit and his old password was metasploit123 and the new password is going to be metasploit right okay let's see what happens now and there you go right we just added the functionality for the net user change password function to net api32 which it did not have previously that's all i had in mind for this video so what we've learned is using railgun you can go ahead and add function definitions to existing dlls those which do not already exist in the definition files either at runtime or by permanently adding them in the static definition files so that you can use them every time you invoke the framework that's all for this video if you like what you see visit securitytube.net slash smfe and consider registering for our course thank you very much have a great day ahead